Spring is almost here, and in this video, I will be covering your 2023 spring forecast. So good Friday morning, everyone. Welcome back. And again, in this video, I will be covering the climate pattern trends on are we trending out of La Nina. Then I'll be covering the March, April, and May temperature and precipitation trends, followed by the severe weather, snowstorm, and frost and freeze climatology and forecasts all in this video. If you guys are not yet subscribed to the YouTube channel, or have liked the video down below, definitely hit both buttons down below. It's the subscribe button to get all of my daily weather forecast updates, including long range weather forecasts and live streams on this channel. And then hit the like button, the thumbs up button down below the video to spread all of this information out to more and more people here on YouTube. I definitely appreciate it. But looking at the climate pattern here, Going all the way back to the fall months, we have been in a La Nina and really around a moderate La Nina dating all the way back to November and even before then back toward Halloween. And we still are in a week to moderate La Nina going through the morning hours here today and looking at the sea surface temperature anomalies here across the equatorial Pacific. We still have that classic La Nina signature with a bluer anomaly showing up just to the south of the Hawaiian Islands here and west of South. America, but near and north of Hawaii, up here toward Alaska and the Aleutian Islands in the North Central Pacific Ocean, we see those orange anomalies showing up with warmer than normal sea surface temperatures across these areas. But over the past seven days, we have actually seen some warmer anomalies start to become entrenched in towards the La Nina here with those warmer anomalies pushing east with the trade winds. We're definitely starting to see uh, those uh, El Nino type of conditions start to take over very slowly, and that will transition us toward neutral and eventually an El Nino pattern going in towards the summer of 2023. And to show you this, we have a consolidation of all the climate models, and right now we're still stuck in that week to moderate La Nina. But as we are continuing to trend back here towards zero, that is an ENSO neutral type of phase of the climate pattern. But by the time we get towards late spring and into early summer, we could be transitioning from neutral conditions to potentially at least a weak El Nino going into the early summer of 2023. So we're starting to transition back across towards neutral and then eventually into El Nino territory with the climate pattern. But looking through March, March. Again, now we're going to go in towards the precipitation and temperature trends through the months of March, April, and May. So first looking at March here, the warmer temperatures, climatologically speaking, are across the Gulf Coast states and the southeast. The colder temperature anomalies are up to the north and across the northeast. We also see the wetter times across the southeast here according to climatology and really much of the eastern two-thirds of the country through the month of March and also a secondary area of some heavier precipitation across the coastal western United States going through the month of March. So breaking this down, the temperature anomalies through this March of 2023. It does look predominantly warmer across the eastern two-thirds of the country as well as the southern United States and then those bluer anomalies with those colder temperatures favored across the western Canadian provinces getting down into the Pacific Northwest and the northern plains going through the month of March. Also the precipitation trends and anomalies here through March does favor an active storm track across the Ohio Valley, the Tennessee Valley and up here to the Midwest and then a secondary area of precipitation across the Pacific Northwest underneath that from Florida, the Carolinas, and then over here towards Texas and the Southwest, we're going to see drier than normal temperature uh, precipitation during the month of March. So breaking this down with my temperature forecast here, I do think the eastern two-thirds will continue to see above normal temperatures from the Maine down through Florida and westward towards Texas and including the Gulf Coast states. In between, across the southern plains, getting up through the central Great Lakes, I do think we'll see near normal temperatures through March and then well below normal temperatures up here across the Pacific Northwest and some of that will bleed farther south towards California, north Northern Arizona into the Rockies here and parts of the upper Midwest through the month of March. Also looking at March's precipitation forecast, I do think the above normal precipitation will be favored again across the Pacific Northwest. We'll see near normal conditions across the Rockies here into the northern and central plains. Below normal precipitation favored across Southern California, Arizona, New Mexico into West Texas. And then a main storm track will take over across parts of interior New England, the Ohio 
Ohio Valley, the Great Lakes up here through the Midwest, and then southwestward towards the Arklatex going through the month of March. Now, looking ahead to April, we start to see the warmer than normal temperature anomalies start to trend farther north as the sun angle starts to get a little bit higher in the sky, as well as the active weather continuing across the eastern two-thirds of the country going through April here, climatologically speaking. And you see through this April, it does look predominantly cooler across the northern and central portions of the United States into southwestern Canada with the warmer than normal temperatures from Florida, the immediate Gulf Coast westward towards New Mexico, Arizona, and Texas here this April. It does look kind of back and forth between near normal to slightly below normal across most of the United States here, according to the CANSIPS model here for the uh, precipitation trends. However, it looks like the temperature forecast does line up to be near normal across the eastern United States here, including the northeast, the mid-Atlantic, getting through parts of the Midwest here, and then westward towards the Rockies. Below normal temperatures favored up here across the Pacific Northwest, the Northern Plains and the Upper Midwest, and then above normal temperatures for much of the Southern United States through the month of April. And then turning over to April's precipitation forecast, we see near normal precipitation across the Pacific Northwest. We have above normal precipitation up here across the upper Midwest, the Ohio Valley into the Mid-Atlantic, and then a lot of below normal precipitation, at least slightly below normal, across the Southeast, the Southern Plains, including the Arquitex regions, and then back across the desert Southwest into California, Nevada, Arizona, and parts of New Mexico, and even Utah here as we go through the month of April. Now moving to our last month here of May, we start to see the angle of the sun get a little bit higher in the sky and those warmer temperatures surging farther north climatologically speaking and we also see a very active period in May as well across the center of the country and the eastern two-thirds of the country according to climatology with those precipitation trends so through this May it does look cooler with the cooler anomalies hanging on across southern portions of the uh, Canadian provinces here getting into the upper Midwest and parts of the Great Lakes with the warmer temperatures starting to surge farther north across the southern central plains and the southeast through the month of May. We also see an active track here of the storms across the Ohio Valley into the Mid-Atlantic. Underneath that though from the Gulf Coast into Florida here and westward towards the southwestern United States, it does look predominantly drier, at least slightly so, going through the month of May. So breaking this down with May's temperature forecast, I do expect near normal conditions with the temperatures up here across the Great Lakes and the Northeast. Below normal temperatures favored again across the Pacific Northwest, getting into parts of the Dakotas here in southwestern Canada. And then well above normal temperatures surging up here across the southern central plains, getting over here toward the Gulf Coast states with the just generally above normal temperatures farther north, getting into the upper Midwest here, parts of the Ohio Valley and the Mid-Atlantic as we get through the month of May. So looking at May's precipitation forecast, near normal up here across the Pacific Northwest, below normal in both areas here across the Southeast and the Gulf Coast and the Pacific Southwest as well with that active storm track setting up here across parts of the Ohio Valley, the Mid-Atlantic and westward towards the upper Midwest and parts of the Northeast here through the month of May. But looking now at severe weather climatology month by month, so this is March and it does look like our severe weather does trend a little bit higher here for frequency across portions of the Gulf Coast and then down toward the Arklatex. That's what we expect for the month of March. Going into April, you see the frequency of severe weather does increase here across the Southern Plains, getting into the Central Plains and also lifting north and eastward towards parts of the Ohio Valley, the lower Midwest here, and in across the Tennessee Valley into April, climatologically speaking. And then going into May, it starts to get a little bit more widespread up here across the Midwest, the Southern Great Lakes, getting in towards the Mid-Atlantic and then farther west through much of the Great Plains through the month of May. So how I see this March, April, and May playing out for the severe weather forecast, this is the frequency of which I think the severe weather will occur this spring. Two times higher here for frequency across the Great Plains and across the Southern Plains, including North Texas and the Red River area, and then four times higher for frequency of severe weather up here across the Upper Midwest, the Illinois Valley getting through much of the Ohio Valley, the Tennessee Valley, and the Gulf Coast States. 
as we go through the month of March, April, and May. And a lot of this will be occurring more, I think, later in the season. I think April and especially May will be big months for severe weather across these areas that I do have highlighted here on this map. Now we turn over to the snowstorm potential and the confidence that we could see some snowstorms lingering into early spring. This is March 2023. I do think it's possible we could see some snowstorms lingering in across the Northeast, the Ohio Valley, and down here across the southern plains at times more likely though across the great lakes stretching back into the upper midwest and parts of the central plains through the month of march but going ahead to april we start to see that lift of farther north and eastward here with still a possible storm track with snowstorms across the northeast especially the interior parts of the northeast potentially along and northwest of the i-95 corridor and that could stretch down across the parts of the mid-atlantic into west virginia and eastern ohio as well through the month of April. And then I don't really see any areas here expected to see any May snowstorms with this forecast. So again, we'll have to wait and see on that. But looking at my late frost and freeze forecast through March, April, and May, it does look possible across most of the center of the country and the eastern two-thirds of the country for a late frost and freeze this year. A more likely zone for frost and freeze here late in the year and especially April and May could occur across the Dakotas, down through the Central Plains, and then across the portions of the Ohio and Tennessee River Valleys with that late April and possibly May frost or freeze out here. So definitely keep that in mind here with the growing season and the vegetation out there if you do have any planting in mind going into April or May. But looking at the U.S. seasonal drought outlook going all the way through at least the end of April here on April 30th. It does look like we'll start to fill in some of the drought with the development of drought across portions of the desert southwest, including southern Colorado, New Mexico, much of central and west Texas, and then another area of drought development likely across central and southern Florida here as well, going through here the next couple of months through at least the end of April. And this is my official spring forecast here at 2023 from March all the way through May. It does look like a lot of rain and snow events here going back and forth across that with some warmer temperatures at times, colder temperatures at times with a rain snow mix here across the Pacific Northwest. Winter looks to linger at least through April across much of the Northern Plains, the upper Midwest and towards the upper Great Lakes regions from Montana all the way up here into up the upper peninsula of Michigan. And then cold and snow late, it'll extend through potentially late March into early April up here across parts of the Northeast getting into the Ohio Valley and the Mid-Atlantic. Flooding could be occurring more frequently across portions of Virginia, the Carolinas, down here through Georgia and Florida as well going through the spring months. Severe weather will be frequent, I do think, across the central southern plains getting over here toward the Tennessee and Ohio River Valleys. That could extend as far north as the Midwest, especially into May. I do think May will be a big month for severe weather here. Warm and dry underneath that across portions of southeastern New Mexico getting into Texas, especially southern Texas toward the Rio Grande Valley. That could extend eastward here toward New Orleans. And then some snow here, especially some mountain snow lingering through early spring across the Colorado and Rocky Mountains here as we go through the month of March, uh, April, and potentially even into May. And then drier conditions here to the west across central southern California, southern Nevada, and then getting into western portions of Utah and Arizona through the spring months here in this video. So to recap my weather forecast, I did talk about the climate pattern trends. We are transitioning out of La Nina back to our neutral conditions for the spring and then potentially flipping to an El Nino here this summer. And then for the March, April, and May temperature and precipitation trends, I covered that in this video and the severe weather, snowstorm and frost and freeze climatology and forecasts. All of that was covered here in this video as well. So thanks for watching everybody. I definitely appreciate it. If you guys like this video, press the thumbs up button down below, leave any comments, questions, and concerns below. I'll get to those later on today. Subscribe to the YouTube channel if you're new and hit the notification bell to get all of my daily weather forecast updates on this channel. Have a great Friday, everybody. A great rest of your weekend, and I will see you all in the next video.